Through our Civic Engagement Center at SUNY Broome, we do deliberations with our college students and in the community. And we find it a very uh, successful way of helping people talk about issues and come to resolution. And so having a role in teacher education, I began to wonder why we're not doing this with younger students. This year I had the pleasure of meeting Lisa Straley from SUNY Broome and she brought the idea of deliberating into the classroom and the idea of going back in time and looking at different perspectives of a major event. In the fall I met with some administrators from the Windsor School District and the middle school principal brought the 1776 deliberation to Stephanie, who then began to engage in conversations with me about how we could deliberate with 140 of her seventh grade students on this topic. And in this case, we looked at the major event of the American Revolution, and the kids had to decide which avenue they would take the country as if they lived back then. At first I was nervous that seventh graders might not be able to handle the complexity of a deliberation, but as we worked together and Stephanie scaffolded their learning to begin with, once they began deliberating it was really clear that this is something they could do and they could do really well. A deliberation requires to get the best ideas from everybody to come up with a better solution instead of the system being so biased. Deliberation is more like informing. Delivering in historical content is more like putting ourselves in other people's shoes from back then. It's showing us how they made decisions for our country as a whole back then and how it's impacting us today. It told a story and it made you feel like you were back in time and like you were the president and trying to choose the choice. It was great for them. Their, their voices were heard and it was very interesting to see the outcome and, and the willingness of, of the kids to participate. Debates don't get anywhere deliberations, you see everyone's point of view. You don't have tunnel vision, you have field vision. <laughs> yeah, you don't have tunnel vision. I think the unique part about deliberations was that kids really started to find themselves and kids that normally don't participate or, you know, are the quiet students in class, they were talking because in a, in a deliberation, everyone participates and, and to see them come to life was, I think, incredible. Bait is like this. I'm right. You're wrong. No, I'm right. You're wrong. I have proof that I'm right. So do I. No, you're wrong. I'm right. I'm, I'm the big man, you're the small man. I'm right. Deliberation is like this. You're right. Yeah, you're right too. I can see your point. Thanks, buddy. I think what we see a lot today in society is citizens who feel like their voice doesn't matter. And I see that particularly in the teacher education field with students who want to be teachers themselves. And so I began using deliberations with students, my pre-service students, and what I found was they found a new way of talking and thinking. I had to take a step back from the teacher role, or you know, the person who stands up there and tells you everything, to the role where, okay, let's figure this out together, and let's look at all these perspectives, and let's see what we can do and which, which path we should, should follow or take. They began to value other people's perspectives. They began to bring a curiosity of why somebody might see something different or value something different than they do. And they began to also understand that together they can make well-reasoned decisions. The other piece of deliberation that I think is really um, effective is that when you begin to think of solutions to a problem, you're forced to ask yourself what's good, what's bad, and what are the trade-offs for every possible solution. And in that way, they begin to see that no solution is perfect, but if it is something that is right for the collective good, it can have a positive impact in the community. So if we had a deliberation, it would bring us more together. It would be much better to have a deliberation in our government today, it would show everybody different points of view instead of just like labeling people. And you're using everyone as a whole group to make a solution to that problem instead of just using your own idea, you're incorporating every single person. They went in with one idea, but when they, they had to look at the other perspectives, it really opened their eyes to the consequences that might have came, you know, had they chose the option they thought they were going to. To look at the other options and what we could have done was really powerful for the kids. At first, I thought I was going to be one of the guys that would just run in and fight and try and save the country, but then after listening to the loyalist perspective and the 
and the people who wanted to fight with Law's perspective, I really, I was leaning towards Loyalist, and then I realized, no, I want to fight with Law's, and I was just going in between each, and I thought that that really helped me understand this, the whole scenario. I thought the deliberation was pretty cool because we got to hear each other's sides and like perspectives of the revolution, and I was like, I was in between the Loyalist and Patriot, and I was having trouble t choosing because I was hearing both sides of the story instead of just one. What I wanted was my future teachers to begin to see how deliberations would work with youngsters and to begin envisioning classrooms someday that they will have that will be very deliberative and give students voices at a young age. I see myself using deliberations with almost every unit of study from here on out. Uh, it's, it's been that good for my students. It has opened my eyes as a teacher that I'm doing something wrong if I only teach the perspective that's in the history books. I think kids need to know that there is more than one way that we could have went as a country. And it's powerful to teach the kids that there are so many paths and that decisions aren't that easy to make, but you can come to them. You know, and you can come to an agreement or a solution. I think what I enjoyed most about deliberating something back in time is you get a real feel, a real feel for the historic period. You get to see all these different scenarios, and it creates like a what if situation. Really, it lets you see how history has unfolded and what would. It makes you wonder what would happen if it happened differently. I think one of the nice pieces that my pre-service teachers often reflect is as they worked to help the children find their voices that my students found their own voices. It's never too late to begin deliberating, but I also believe it's never too early to begin deliberating. I don't think there'll be a topic in US history where I couldn't use a deliberation in the future. Deliberations can be used in any sort of problem in our society, from anything in government or just in your community to just make it a better place. They really add to the value of the classes and in the end, if you are giving your students a couple different perspectives to look at, there's no reason why you can't take a day at to let them talk about it. I feel like if people use deliberation more instead of debate, there would be a lot less arguing and animosity in the world because we'd be able to see everything from everyone else's perspective instead of just our own. Letting students find their voice in my class has been enriching for the students who excel and it has allowed those students who sometimes just get by to experience tremendous success in more than one way. They feel empowered and that, that's why I'm here. That's why I teach.